Hi, it's Rob Nelson, thinker about and practitioner of collaborative project-based learning and collaborative assessment. Welcome to vlog number four in our series about the great collaborative project adventure. Now, at the end of the previous vlog, I said that this time around I was going to talk about that situation that many of us, maybe all of us, have been in at some point, where we have to get together in a group or a team to carry out a particular exercise or a project. Everybody's looking around at everybody else and thinking, by golly, I hope somebody opens their mouth before I'm forced to, because I don't want to be the leader. And you know, as well as I know it, how many times does it happen this way? The first person to open their mouth, by default, becomes the leader because everybody else in the team is so happy that that person seems to know what they're doing. Hey, they must know what they're doing because they've spoken up. But is that really the way it is? So many of us get put off having to be in a leadership role because one of the things we're not clear about, and often it may not be covered as part of the course briefing, is what does the leadership role actually involve? Now, that's kind of sad in a way because many of us actually have leadership experience, but we don't think of the experience we've got as being leadership experience. If we're a member of a family, we probably have leadership experience within the scope of the family unit. If we're a member of a sports team, a church group, virtually any group, even a group of friends, we will have some level of leadership experience. We'll certainly have been on the receiving end of other people practicing leadership, so we're obviously going to have some thoughts about what effective leadership is and what it isn't. But in the context of a collaboratively worked project and collaboratively assessed project, one of the things that everybody in the group needs to know, and you need to help them discover this, is what leadership is in the context of this particular course, this particular project. So that's why it's so useful to find out exactly what experience people already have so they can come to understand even if I haven't had the word leader as part of some kind of formal title, I've actually done leadership. I've been on the receiving end of enough leadership to know what it is. So it's useful to tease all of those things out at the beginning, get them up on the board, put them in a mind map, record them somewhere so everybody can have a look at them and come back to them as necessary. And once you've got that out, then you can start thinking about, well, what is leadership going to look like in the context of this course and this project? Is it a major issue if one person doesn't put their hand up and say, all right, it's me, for whatever reason, I will do it? My first experience of collaborative project work, I was expecting that would be a disaster if that happened because then the person who was in charge of the course was going to pick somebody using whatever criteria they would use, and that person would be it, and they'd have no way of getting out of it, and everybody else would be happy. So you see, we've been brought up to expect that every team has one leader. But can a team work with a co-leadership model? Well, I think the answer has to be yes. Two of the most successful project teams that I've ever worked with as part of the Applied Management course had a co-leadership model. Each team, three people, they came in from day one, they'd done a bit of homework, so they pretty much knew what the course was all about, and they came up to me and said, Robbie, we're not going to have one leader. There is nothing you can do that will make us have one leader. Because we know each other well enough, we've done other courses together, we're pretty much like old married couples. Each one of us can finish the other one's sentence and there's a 99% chance that we're actually going to be right 
in terms of what that person would have said. So we know what the strengths and the weaknesses are within the team, and we have decided that regardless of what project we're working on, that's the way that we're going to do it. That seriously, it's going to be a democracy, that we don't need one person to take overall charge, that we can make shared decisions, we can play to everybody's strengths, so that means there is no area of weakness that nobody in the team covers. Robbie, trust us, let us do it. Now, in the case of those two particular teams, I was absolutely delighted at the end because they're the only two teams that I've ever worked with over the many years that I've been involved with collaborative learning and collaborative assessment, where if they ever had any problems, I never knew about them. Whatever problems they did have, they were able to talk out and to resolve among themselves. So there's never any situation where they would come to me and say, Robbie, we've got a problem and we can't solve it. So please, can you step in and solve it for us? So that model can work. Whether it will work right from the beginning, if you said to everybody in a cohort, this is the way we're going to do it, nobody is going to have overall responsibility for whatever team they're in, that that responsibility is going to be shared. I don't know. I, th I think it works better when people have that knowledge of each other and how they operate. So perhaps there's an argument there for a little bit of pre-training going on before the work of the main course and the main project gets started, and people have to figure out how to do it for real. And that's something that I'm going to come back to in some future vlogs where I talk about the chips model and the lamb chops and mint sauce model. These are both things that I've created as part of the work I'm doing for my doctorate in professional practice leadership. So we'll talk about those in some future videos. But I just want to leave this thought with you that leadership doesn't have to be one person. Leadership can be a group of people, even if it is one person, think about this. You've actually got distributed leadership happening within the group anyway, because that one leader isn't going to be the expert for every single part of the project, are they? They're going to divvy out some of those responsibilities. So if it was me, for instance, I know when it comes to the accounting side of a project, I would be looking for somebody that understands numbers way better than I do because I'm your classic number phobe. I'll deal with them if I have to, but otherwise I don't really want to go near them. I would much rather leave that to somebody that actually understands numbers and what they mean, providing they understand, of course, that those numbers on the spreadsheet, they represent real things being done by real people. So... Get to know your team before you make the decisions around who's going to fill the leadership roles because you're going to have leadership within each role, each specialist task within that group. Now, it may be that some people have more leadership roles than others simply because of the nature of the tasks that apply to that particular project. Make sure that you don't overload somebody just because somebody is willing to take something on. Don't keep loading on them because sooner or later you're going to wake up and discover that one person is a leader for 10 different parts of the project and the other two people on the team or the other three people on the team, they're the leader for one part each. And then they wonder why the person who's got 10 things that they're leading is starting to burn out and they're not coping, and things are starting to kind of fall by the wayside, and whatever the plan was that they came up with at the beginning no longer matches the reality of what's happening. So make sure that people know what leadership is all about in the context of the project, that it is something that everybody can do. They don't have to be an expert leader in every particular task, by working together, they end up in a situation 
where literally the old saying becomes true. Together, everyone achieves more. So think about your leadership roles before you make decisions. If you've enjoyed this video, please down below hit the like and click on the subscribe buttons. So that'll make sure that you get notified as future vlogs come out. And in the next vlog, I want to talk about this particular issue a little bit more. I want to go into exactly what is it a leader needs to do. So being able to answer that question may make it a little bit easier. In fact, hopefully it's going to make it a lot easier to end up in a situation where you don't have nobody putting the hand up, where you don't have somebody having to step in from outside and make the decision over who's going to take that role. So thank you very much for spending this time with me and allowing me to share my thoughts on leadership. And I look forward to talking with you in the next vlog soon. Have a great day. Catch you later. Bye.